Welcome to another video. This video is going to be pretty quick. I'm going to talk about how to solve some very basic inverse trig functions. Um, the reason why is just to get your brains ready for how to solve the, these things and understand that while an inverse undoes a function, a function will also undo an inverse. So here's the idea. Very basic, very straightforward, just getting us ready to solve some of these equations coming up in just a little while. If ever you want to solve an equation, isolate the variable. In order to isolate the variable, sometimes we can factor to do that and create these factors. Uh, but with functions like this, we want to isolate the thing that contains the variable. So if you have an inverse trig function somewhere in your equation, you need to isolate it. So what we're going to do is say, if we can isolate the inverse trig function, then we'll take the appropriate function and do it. So for sine inverse, we'll use sine. For cosine inverse, we'll use cosine. For tangent inverse, we'll use tangent on both sides. There's not a whole lot of domain work to deal with because this x will naturally fit in whatever domain you need it to. Um, so we don't have to deal with a lot of that. It's going to work out just fine for us. And you're going to see that as we go through. So let's get started. If we have 4 sine inverse of x equals pi, the first thing we want to do is, of course, isolate sine inverse of x so that we can undo it with the sine function. That means we'll divide by 4. Now, we've isolated sine inverse of x. The only way that we can get x by itself is to use sine on both sides of this equation, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Sine's going to undo sine inverse, just like sine inverse undid sine. They're inverses of one another. So we have to show that on the left-hand side of both of these sides of this equation. So sine of sine inverse of x, that's just going to be x. On the right-hand side, wait a minute, sine of pi over 4, that's something we can actually do. So sine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Use your circle, if you remembered it already, that's great. And we're done. We just solved that. And in fact, if you plug that in, this would actually work. Sine inverse of square root of 2 over 2 is pi over 4. 4 times pi over 4, when well, 4s are canceled, you get pi. Pi equals pi. It is true. It does work. So isolate the inverse function, then take the appropriate function on both sides. Same thing's going to happen here. 3 times tan inverse of x equals pi. Let's divide both sides by 3, isolating that tan inverse. It's inverses that undo functions. So for the inverse of tan, sorry, for tangent inverse, tangent is that appropriate inverse. Let's take tangent on both sides. On the left hand side, tangent of tangent inverse of x is just going to give us x. On the right hand side, tangent of pi over 3. Well, tangent of pi over 3 is going to take square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half. That's simply the square root of 3. I know I'm going fast through that because we spent a lot of time doing things like that and using the unit circle. So we should know that tan of pi over 3 takes the y coordinate over the x coordinate. Square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half is square root of 3. Let's move on. So 3 cosine inverse of 2x equals 2 pi. Looks a little bit more difficult, but remember the idea. Isolate the function that contains your variable, then use an inverse function. So we're simply going to divide by 3 here. Once we've done that, cosine inverse of 2x equals 2 pi over 3. Well, we've got to get at that 2x, but we get it. We have to undo that function hanging around it. We can't divide and multiply. We've got to use cosine on both sides. On the left-hand side, cosine of cosine inverse of 2x is just 2x. On the right-hand side, cosine of... 2 pi over 3. Well, that's going to be negative 1 half. So it's in quadrant 2. x is negative. Cosine, therefore, is negative. Negative 1 half. Dividing both sides by 2. Now, now that we've isolated that 2x, that's great. Cosine inverse was gone. We just get x equals negative 1 fourth. Last one. Looks a little bit tricky. Um, hmm, because, because why? We have, we have two terms that have cosine inverse of x in them. 
just like every other time that you have like terms on different sides of your equation, you can bring them on one side and combine them. And you can actually combine this. If this is 4 cosine inverse of x and 2 cosine inverse of x, let's subtract 2 cosine inverse of x from both sides and add 2 pi. This should look familiar, getting all of our x terms on one side and everything else on the other side. This is isolating that variable. So we've subtracted 2 cosine inverse of x on both sides, we've added 2 pi to both sides. These are actually combinable. So if we have 4 of something minus 2 of something, altogether you have 2 cosine inverse of x. Then we're going to divide both sides by 2. So 2 pi divided by 2 is just pi. Lastly, now that we've isolated that inverse function, we need to use cosine, the appropriate function that's going to get rid of cosine inverse on both sides of our equation. Because cosine of cosine inverse simplified, that's literally one of our identities there uh, for inverse functions, we're going to get x. On the right-hand side, cosine of pi is negative 1. So cosine of 180 degrees or pi, that's going to be negative 1 comma 0. The x-coordinate is negative 1. We know that's negative 1, and we're done. So I hope that that makes sense. It's, it's honestly really, really quick. Um, isolate your inverse function and take the appropriate, honestly, parent function, that root function, um, on both sides. Your functions undo inverses, just like inverses undo functions. Not a whole lot with domain that we have to mess with here which is very, very nice. I hope it makes sense, and I'll see you for another video.